Hey church, so uh, we are going to read some scriptures today. Uh, well, we always do, don't we? Uh, but the passage we're going to read is somewhat familiar to most of you. If you've been around us, preached many messages and done many devotionals because of the impact and the help that the verses that we find today are. Now, I'm not going to read all of them that I usually do. And the reason for that is, as I've been praying, looking at what God wants us to say, there's a specific focus that started with Sunday's message this past Sunday's. If you have not seen that message, I would encourage you and invite you to join us. Uh, if you can physically every Sunday, we have services at 9, 15 and 11, but also you can join us online wherever you are. Uh, you can join us through our YouTube channel which all you have to do is go into the search and do Christian Faith Fellowship, comma, Tucson, and you will see us come up and select that, and you can watch the service either live or you can watch it forthcoming at any time. So let's get on with the devotional for today. In Philippians chapter 4, as you know, there's some amazing uh, passage there of Scripture, but we're going to just look at verse 8. Usually you know if you've been around here, it's going to be verses 6 through 8. But today it's only going to be verse 8. And the reason for that is what it tells us to do and the challenge that God is bringing forth from his word and a theme that he's brought to us in our maturity going from this past Sunday's message into this week. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Okay, so as we get this thought in our mind and as we're going forward, we as Christian people maturing in our faith, spending time with God in prayer, in reading the Word of God, in uh, silent time, just listening, being with Him, practicing our daily spiritual disciplines, understand that the enemy is always trying to get us distracted and he does this by taking our mind in directions that are not healthy for us. They're temptations to take us off course. So in this passage of scripture, it brings forth a challenge to us to fix our thoughts on things and the good things. This isn't a power of positive thinking uh, idea. What it is, is focusing on the things that God is up to, what God is doing, how he's moving in your life, what you see him doing around you, because the world is always trying to take us down a dark path, the path of no hope, darkness, despair, um, wreck. Uh, you know, I mean, just, you don't even have to watch the news, which that's all that that's about. It's none of this. But if you just go on social media, and you look at things that are there, the, the vast majority of things are focused on what's wrong, what's messed up. Well, as Christians, we already know what's wrong. We live in a world that is tainted by sin. There is the core issue of everything that is going on around us. All right, we're aware, we know. We know the enemy, we know what he's all about. But we also know God, and we know the victory that is forthcoming. We know the victory that we have in our own life. And therefore, we need to focus on the things that God has for us. Begin to put this into practice. I challenge you to put this verse, this, this idea that God has given to us from his word of the things that are true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and worthy of praise. Put that verse on your mirror for in the morning by your shower. Put it by your coffee maker. Put it on your computer at work. Put it on your device. Like, let's keep our minds focused on what God is doing, not what the enemy's doing. Let's praise God for what he's doing. Let's be his church. God bless you today.